God, I can't believe I'm finally filming the sit down portion of this video. Hey y'all, it's Care. Today's video has been in the making for a while now. So I've recently read three of one of my best booktube friends' favorite books and now I'm here to talk about them. The lovely lady in question is the Haley Hughes. I talk about her all the time on this channel. Ugh, I just love her so much. So not only does she have this fantastic booktube channel where she mostly recommends thrillers, she'll read like the occasional contemporary or literary fiction or like romance book, but she has the best thriller book recommendations. So first of all, please go subscribe to Haley, support her channel, she's just so wonderful. Second of all, she has such a creative blog. It's called Murals and Mimosa. She writes about fashion and beauty and food and drinks and locations in like the Austin, Texas area And of course she also talks about books on her blog in one of her recent videos She recommended an Etsy shop and had a little link in her bio for the shop that made these earrings I ordered them immediately like I just take her up on all of her recommendations not just her book stuff So again, please go check her out and here's a better look at the earrings Just if you were curious the shop is called lolly and I'll have that in the description as well. Okay, so Haley and I have very, very similar taste when it comes to books and especially thrillers. I did the little Goodreads comparison where you can compare the books that you've read and the ratings you've given those books with other people that you're friends with on Goodreads. And it turns out that we have 100 books that we've both read in common. And from those 100 books, Goodreads says that we have a 76% similar taste. I don't really know how they pulled that stat, but I trust them, I think. It sounds about right because just about all of Haley's favorite thrillers are also my favorite thrillers. I wrote some down just to give you a little glimpse into what our taste is like. Some of our favorite books that we have in common are The One by John Mars, No Exit by Taylor Adams, Anything by Karen Slaughter, Big Little Lies, The Silent Patient, Kill Creek. Like, we just both really love all of those books. So when we decided to read each other's favorite books, it was kind of challenging to find her favorite books that I haven't already read. So here is what we came up with. First, I read The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier. Then I read The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine, it was sitting right here. And then I read The Last Victim by Jason Moss. So while I was reading these three books, I was simultaneously having just about the most difficult and busiest work week of my life. So I didn't get as much vlogging in as I wanted to. And like the vlog clips that I did film, I was in such a bad mood because I was so busy that like it just wasn't translating well. So what I've done is I've like saved some of the vlog footage. And when I'm talking about each book, I'm just gonna show you some of my reactions in real time, but then we we will come back here and have a little meeting to discuss like my final thoughts, my actual feelings, just to give you a more composed idea of what I really thought about each of these books. So let's go ahead and start with The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier. I just got off work and uh, I'm in pain. But during my lunch break, I started The Butcher and I already love it. I read the first two chapters, they were both rather short, but it's already giving me, now hang with me for a second, it's kind of reminding me of how I felt while I was reading The One by John Mars. Not thematically, like nothing really in the plot is the same as that book, but just how like so far both of the chapters have had these wild turns kind of at the end. So I'm really interested to see like, if the pace continues to be this fast, because if it is, then I'm just gonna fly through this. It's giving me Karen Slaughter meets Stillhouse Lake series, like right off the bat. I don't know, I just love it so much. The only thing that's like really bugging me right now is that I just don't see how this book was not written by a man, just because I feel like there's a lot of unnecessary commentary about women's bodies. Like it's kind of reminding me of how like Stephen King describes a lot of women in his books, like just very overly sexual for no reason. Like this poor woman can just be trying to like do her job as a nurse or literally be walking down the street or something. And we have just got to hear about her body. Like, I just think that's weird. And at first I thought it was because we're getting these perspectives of some twisted people, but then like the main girl, Sam, literally is objectifying women two we're just like one so far um but i just thought it was weird i just think it's weird it's not really affecting my enjoyment of the book but i just kind of wanted to talk about it i don't know when i read the first like 20 30 ish percent of this book i really thought it was going to be a new favorite of all time i'm almost finished with it now and even though i don't feel that way anymore it is still thoroughly entertaining like i'm just having a great time over here reading but I think that the ending is just gonna really have a big impact on whether or not this is gonna actually be 
four and a half or five stars. So this book starts out with a chief of police killing the Beacon Hill Butcher. The butcher has been terrorizing the area for a while now, so everyone is glad that all of the madness and the killings are going to stop. So then, years down the road, we're following the chief of police's grandson. The grandson's really intense and really driven. He owns a restaurant and a food truck, and he's kind of this budding star on something similar to the Food Network, which that was just such a like very specific detail detail and subplot of this whole book, but I might talk about it later. So his name is Matt, and Matt has a girlfriend named Sam. Sam believes that her mother was murdered by the butcher, but get this, her mother was murdered after the Beacon Hill Butcher had been executed by Matt's grandfather. So we're already in this like tangle of lies? I don't know. <laughs> so Sam is actually writing a true crime book about the butcher and kind of about her theory as well. So she's meeting other people who agree with her. You know, people who think that the wrong man was killed and wrongfully accused of being the butcher and that he was still active later on after he supposedly died. Um, so we don't really know if there's a copycat situation going on. We're just not sure as readers but we are following those three people throughout the book. The grandfather, Matt, and Samantha. And the first 25 to 30% of this book was incredible. I was so jarred just right off the bat. I was not expecting this book to be as dark and gory as it was. There's a scene towards the very beginning of the book that was so reminiscent of Karen Slaughter, and like, I think I said it in one of the clips, but Karen Slaughter meets the Stillhouse Lake series. Those books are so good to me, so when I saw those two kind of meshing together to give me the butcher in the beginning, I was so thrilled. But then, here's what kind of happened. Things were so wild at the beginning. Like we start off with the action up here. And then as I kept reading, the action stayed up here. So I was commanding Hillier. I was like, wow, this is still so intense. I am still right there along for the ride. But then once I got to the end, um, it just, it just all kind of evened out, in my opinion. The action just kind of rose at the beginning and then we just rode that wave out through the rest of the book which is impressive, like I was never bored reading this. There was always something going on and I really was reading this very quickly because I just had to know what was going on. But there was this wild twist at the end that I felt like I didn't have enough time to let it sink in for it to really shock me. I think that the ending was just a little bit rushed. So I am gonna give this four out of five stars. I was thinking it was gonna be like four and a half right up until the very end until I realized, oh, that was the twist. There's nothing else really coming here. I kind of like how it ended because nothing was really left open-ended. We pretty much know where the story ends. But like I said, we just had a few things thrown in at the very end. Like I'm talking the last 5% of the book. I just felt like it came on too strong, too quick. It felt kind of like a last ditch effort to um, spike the drama up to a pinnacle at the very end and it didn't really work for me, but I really did love this journey. This book barely has 3,000 ratings on Goodreads, so like, cheers to you, Haley, for seeking this out, reading it, enjoying it, and then recommending it because I would have never heard about this book if you hadn't praised it so highly, and I think this is such a strong thriller. Now, there are a ton of trigger warnings. I'm gonna put all of those in the description of this video because, I don't know, just please don't read it if anything is sensitive to you. Just check those out if you're sensitive to anything in particular because this book probably hits on it in some way. I feel like we covered a lot of triggering content, but if you like dark thrillers, then you've got the green light from Haley, you've got the green light from me. I think this one was really solid. Next, I read The Last Mrs. Parrish and I will show you how that went now. It's just making me feel like I wish I was really wealthy with like a disposable source of income, just flaunting money, buying whatever I want. Like this is not good for my mental health. I just hate everyone and I knew this was gonna happen. Okay, I have a theory, Haley. Feel free to let me know if I'm way off base here. And I can't really say too much about this theory because this is gonna be a spoiler-free video, but there's a very specific trope in this book. I'm trying to tiptoe around explaining this because if you've read it, then you'll know what I mean. But if you've not read it, I don't wanna give anything away. But anyway, there's a very specific trope in this book or maybe it's called like a plot device having to do with um, perspectives that I think that the reason that this one is so high on Haley's list of her favorite books is because this might be one of the first ones that she read using this twist. Maybe I am so wrong there, but I feel like if I had read this before I read some other books that do kind of the same thing that I did really, really love, 
then this would be one of my favorite books as well. But because I, I kind of knew what was coming, I mean, I wasn't positive, but I, I kind of could see what was coming from like the first few chapters. Then from there, I just kind of was able to predict everything that was to come. So I feel really bad because I've kind of settled on somewhere between three and three and a half stars for The Last Mrs. Parrish, but it's just because I was just able to, to predict everything. So kind of take in my review with that in mind and still know that Haley really, really loved it. So in the beginning of this book, we are following Amber and Amber is trying to wiggle her way into this other woman named Daphne's life. Amber is pretending like she used to have a sister who then passed away from cystic fibrosis because she knows that happened to Daphne's sister when they were younger. So Amber uses this lie as an in to Daphne's life, but at first we're just not sure what Amber's motives really are. We know that Daphne is incredibly wealthy. She has a very handsome husband and a beautiful family. And we also know that Amber has a past that she's trying to run away from. So the thing that really kept me reading in the first half of the book was the fact that I was questioning what what is Amber up to? I read part one of this book, which takes up a little over half of the book. I read it so quickly because I really could not decide if Amber was more motivated by what she was trying to get away from or because she wanted to infiltrate this wealthy lifestyle. Like I just couldn't decide what I thought it was. So in that regard, it kept me guessing. But just like I said, within the first few chapters, I just re I just knew what the plot twist was gonna be. And then sure enough, when we hit part two, like between 50 and 60% of the way through the book, we got a second perspective that was no longer Amber. And it just kind of flipped the book on its head. And I hate to say it, but I just, I did not enjoy part two anywhere near as much as I enjoyed part one. And then there was like a last little bit at the end that was like kind of a mix of everything that we had read up until that point and I just thought that was very like such a strange choice. I just feel like if part one could have been stretched out and we could have had a different type of twist in the book then this could be a four or five stars easy. I really really loved Liv Constantine's writing style. The book was a very good mix of being well written and also being very readable and very page turning but I'm just gonna say it for like the 15th time. I just felt like I knew what was coming so I'm just gonna try to like wiggle my way out of this review because I feel so bad because I wanted to love it. I don't want Haley to hate me because she loves this one. We can all have different opinions, of course, but like, I feel like this one's gonna hurt her a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay, I think I already said it, but we're just gonna go with a three star for The Last Mrs. Parrish. And let's move on to the last book that I read for Haley. It was The Last Victim by Jason Moss. This one took me on a very emotional roller coaster of a journey. And thank goodness I, I got the most footage probably from reading this book, even though I read it in the shortest amount of time. So here you go. First cry of 2021. I'm almost late to work because I couldn't stop reading in my car. It's getting so disgusting and I feel really uncomfortable with the fact that I'm enjoying it as much as I am. Like, I don't know what that says about me. Even though I would have to disagree, I think I understand the low ratings for this book just because Jason's voice is very like, uh, I don't wanna say braggy, but it's just very, immature kind of and the things that he's doing is make there it's making me just uncomfortable like uncomfortable i'm at a loss for words and i've got to go back to work now i'm gonna to have to explain this later <laughs> The Last Victim is a true crime book. So this is a true story about a young guy who's about 18 when he starts all this up. He starts writing to serial killers in prison and then they start writing back to him. And the whole book is just so, so stomach turning and disturbing. And I say this as a very active consumer of true crime content from shows to podcasts to books. I read a lot of this stuff and I have to tell you that my favorite way that these stories are told are when they are told from people who are able to tie their own personal stories into the true crime story itself. So I'm not talking about like a victim recounting what actually happened. I'm talking about an outside third party digging their nose into the drama and then somehow relating it back to their own lives. So think I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Also The Man on the Train, which I'm kind of reading right now. I've not finished that book, but um, just books about these 
people from the outside who then want to look on the inside of the true crime stories and then their own lives get caught up in the drama and the evil and just the sadness of it all. As you saw from the vlog clips, this book really deeply upset me. I knew going into this book that Jason was going to be talking to Richard Ramirez, John Wayne Gacy, um, Charles Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, and that those are the only ones I knew about going into it. The reason that this book upset me so bad is because I was getting to see sides of these people that I thought that I knew the cases, but I just, I really, I just really didn't. I, this book is like knocking the wind out of me to talk about it, and I know that was happening in my vlog clips too, and I kept telling myself when I sit down to actually film this video, I'll have composed all of my thoughts. Obviously, I still haven't. I, I can't really explain why this book was so much more disturbing to me than other true crime books that I have read recently, but it was. And I know that the little subtitle of this book is like, a look into the minds of serial killers or something like that but I think it's because we really didn't go into their minds like we're getting to see this correspondence we're getting to see them in a way that I personally like have not read about or seen on TV but I really feel like we were actually going into Jason's mind and that was a scary thing for me um I have not mentioned this yet, but the reason that I was crying in a lot of the clips is because eventually Jason Moss does take his own life. And so I just could not stop thinking about how when he wrote The Last Victim, like, you know, when he was interviewing everyone, compiling all of these notes, writing his book, getting help with it, calling it The Last Victim, and, you know, how they were eventually able to get into his psyche and get under his skin, and how he felt he was their last victim, and then later on ending his own life, the title just takes on a, a new double meaning for me, and it was making me so sad, but I, I just feel like this is such a unique story. It's just, it's, it's a one-of-a-kind story. I was not going to rate this book because I've kind of turned over a new leaf in 2021 in not rating nonfiction and just giving you thorough reviews so that you can get the gist of how I felt about the book without like putting a rating on someone's personal story. But I did decide to rate this book five stars just because in looking through Goodreads, um, I saw a lot of one star reviews, I saw a lot of very low reviews, and I feel like my reading experience with the book was so far off from those that I wanted to do something that could easily encourage other people to, to pick up the story. I think that people's most common complaint is that Jason sounds immature a lot of the times when he's writing and he also just sounds like kind of cocky. And I can see where that would put a lot of readers off, but I really think that first of all, he was an 18 year old boy when he begins conducting these interviews and the correspondences and he wouldn't have been that much older while writing and publishing the book and then second of all it's giving us an extra layer into into his mind and how he was eventually uh, manipulated by these people so like i just thought it was genius i really thought it was genius the way that everything is put together it does kind of feel all over the place but to me that just made it feel so much less clinical a lot of the times in reading true crime books it is just facts 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 and that is important but it's like this is what happened and then this is why it happened and then this is the outcome but with just everything swirling around me while i was reading i felt like i really was in this person's mind which just disturbed me further it just made the book feel so much more personal to me and it continuously reminded me that moss was not a professional he was very intelligent but at the end of the day he was just a young man he was basically a boy and the way that everything ended up just coming together added a homemade thrill to the book. I don't know, I read this on my Kindle and um, I really wanna get my hands on a hard copy at some point because um, I, I'm not gonna lie, I had to skim a little bit through some of the interviews just because it was, it was so disgusting and I feel like I'm not sensitive to this type of content most of the time, but um, it, it's a book that I want to revisit in the future and I just wanna thank Haley so much for putting it on my radar. All right, well thank you so much for watching. I have another video in this little series coming sometime soon, so keep an eye out for that. Make sure you check out Haley's channel and all of her links that are in my description, and I'll see you in the next video.